Welcome to our fourth video as part of Chemistry 1. This video we're going to look at covalent molecular compounds and through that we're going to look at our third type of bonding, covalent bonding. Okay, so when we think of covalent bond bonds, these are bonds that form between non-metals, okay, so atoms of non-metals and in this type of bonding they actually share some electrons. Now covalent bonds differ to ionic bonds because there's no direct transfer, it's not like they give electrons away or take electrons, they actually share electrons to make sure they get a full outer shell. So bonds are formed between atoms and we call these bonds intramolecular bonds, okay? Now we've got a couple of different bond types, okay? We've got intramolecular bonds and then we've got intermolecular bonds. Now the intramolecular bond here, for example, between the chlorine and the hydrogen, they're really, really strong, okay? They make that molecule a very strong molecule and it's hard to break them apart. Whereas sometimes you get bonds between molecules here and they are weaker bonds. So the intermolecular are weaker. So intramolecular, strong, hold the molecule together. Intermolecular, they're weak and it's an attraction as such. Okay, so for example, they hold a solid molecule lattice together. So those intra bonds, okay, again here. Okay, we're looking at the intra. Okay, now non-metals have high electronegativities. So they can attract electrons easily and don't give up electrons easily. So when two non-metallic atoms come into contact, they both want to complete their outer shells, okay? So these non-metals, they've got this high electro negativity remember they're in the top right of the periodic table that's where the high electronegativity is and that's because they can attract electrons easily but they don't give them up okay so two non-metals coming into contact they both want to complete their outer shell so how they do this is they share electron pairs okay between the two of them then there's an electrostatic attraction between a shared pair of electrons and the positive nuclei. Let's look at this a bit closer. Okay, so by sharing the single unpaired electrons, both atoms can complete their outer shell. So if we look at hydrogen here, hydrogen only has one electron in its outer shell. Okay, now it wants it wants two to fill that shell up okay so you get two hydrogen atoms and they share them so this hydrogen atom has two electrons and this hydrogen atom has two electrons so we get the molecule of hydrogen H2 two atoms of hydrogen okay let's have a look at chlorine okay we've got two chlorine atoms and if we look in this outer shell we've got one two three four five six seven electrons so chlorine wants to gain one more electron in that outer shell to make it complete we've got two chlorine atoms both wanting to gain one more electron so a covalent bond is a result of simultaneous electrostatic attraction of two positive nuclei wanting to have the say, paired electrons okay so this is, is positive because we've got 17 protons here and we're trying to grab that other electron in now when we actually draw these diagrams and you'll see here we've got our two chlorine atoms here and their nice full shells on the outside the eight ele electrons when we draw these, we don't tend to draw all those shells because things can get very confusing. So we will have a look shortly of how we draw them. However, before we get there, let's have a look at these properties of covalent molecular substances. So our first property is that our covalent molecular substances, so covalent meaning non-metals, 
okay? They tend to have low melting and boiling points. So quite often they're liquids or gases at room temperature. The forces of attraction between the particles must be very weak, okay? Generally, they're poor conductors of electricity. So there's no charged particles that are free to move through the lattice. So if you remember in your metals, you had those um, charged particles that could move through and that made them good conductors of electricity. Okay, so as I just said, we're going to think about these diagrams. So electron dot diagrams are a form of shorthand that simplify how we can draw the outer shell of electrons. Electron dot diagrams are also referred to as Lewis diagrams. And we draw electron dot diagrams for atoms and molecules as a guide to understand how electrons are being shared through our covalent bonds. So how do we draw them? To draw an electron dot diagram, we replace the atoms, nucleus, and the inner shells by the element symbol. So we've got chlorine here. What we're going to do is replace that, that shell, that shell, and the nucleus just with the symbol CL. The outer shell electrons, they're going to still remain, okay? So we're going to have a CL, and then we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons around it. Okay, so CL, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons surrounding it. So the CL has now replaced the inner two shells and the nucleus. The dots are paired where possible if there are more than four in the outer electrons present. So you see how we've paired them, one, two, one, two, one, two. So we paired them knowing we've got this one that's not part of a pair. Alrighty, so representing chlorine using the electron dots. So we've got two chlorine atoms and here we've got them joined and they're sharing those electrons. So they're sharing those red electrons, making one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for this atom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for this atom. All right, so we've got some names. These electrons that are not being used as part of the bond are called our non-bonding electrons. The electrons that are part of the bond are called the bonding electrons. And any pair of electrons that are not part of the bond are also called lo lone pair, or not part of a bond, are called lone pair electrons. We'll see what that means as we work through. Alrighty, so let's learn how to draw these electron dot diagrams or these Lewis structures. First of all, draw the dot diagram for each of the molecule, each of the atoms that are going to be in the molecule. We're going to do um, our chlorine molecule. So we've got our two chlorine atoms. Identify unpaired electrons available to form the covalent bonds. So these two are our unpaired. Now, when we actually draw this, these two will be on the other side and this one will be over here. So you can swap around where the electrons are to make that work. The paired electrons do not, paired electrons do not participate in the bonding. We said that these are the lone pairs, okay? They're not involved in the bond. The atom with the most bonding electron would go in the center. So if you've got, for example, carbon dioxide, carbon is has the most bonding occurring, so that would go in the middle. We'll have a look at that molecule shortly. But in this case, we've got two of the same, so that point doesn't matter so much here. Okay, so we've now drawn our bond in. So they're sharing these two electrons. So we need to check that all the atoms are paired and each atom is surrounded by eight electrons. This is for everything except hydrogen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
perfect. Alrighty, so that's the electron dot. Now, if you have a look here, we've got carbon dioxide and we've got two different ways of drawing it. We've got our Lewis diagram here. Okay, and you'll see how carbon's in the middle. Like we said earlier, it's got the most amount of bonds. So that's why the carbon's in the middle. However, we've got this diagram here, and this is what we call our structural formulae. Now, lines are, are used to represent the electron pair bonds. One line represents one pair of electrons. So here we've got a pair of electrons. Here we've got a line. So that's a structural formulae compared to our Lewis diagram. So if we've got a molecule with more than two shared electrons, so more than one pair, for example, oxygen has only six valen valence electrons. Each atom needs to share two electrons in, the sh in order to attain a full outer shell. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All righty. Count the non-bonding and bonding electrons for each atom. The bonding electrons count for both atoms. Each oxygen atom now has eight electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But there's two lots of bonding. So on our structural diagram, we have two lots of bonding. So again, if we go back to our carbon dioxide on the previous slide, we've got two shared bonds on either side, okay? All right, so draw a Lewis diagram for, a, that should say, for a molecule of nitrogen. Now, nitrogen is what we know as N2. So if we have a look at our nitrogen diagram here, we've got one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so to get our N2 molecule, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So to be able to get full shells, our two nitrogen atoms need to share six electrons between them. Okay, so why do you think nitrogen gas is so unreactive? Having a look at this, what do you reckon? It's because it's got this triple covalent bond. Okay, so it's much harder to break than one covalent bond. It's much harder to break than two covalent bonds. It's got three covalent bonds there and therefore requires a much greater amount of energy, almost five times that of chlorine gas to break the triple bonds between the atoms. Alrighty, the next thing we're going to look at is the idea of this three-dimensional shape of molecules. So we always draw the molecules 2D on paper as such, but we need to remember that things in science are 3D, okay? There's that extra dimension. It's not just as simple as draw, drawing it flat on a piece of paper. So the 3D shape of molecules depend on various factors, and one of these is bonding. Okay, now the following shapes are created due to covalent bonds. We've got tetrahedral, pyramid, pyramidal, linear, and planar. Now we're going to look at each of these, but I don't want you stressing too much about them. Okay, so our tetrahedral, we've got four bonding pairs, okay? So we've got this geometrical arrangement of four covalent bonds and it keeps the electron pairs as far away from each other as possible and it kind of makes this tetrahedral shape, okay? Okay, let's have a look at our pyramidal shapes now. And to do this, we've got, or for this, we've got three bonding pairs and one lone pair. So we're going to look at ammonia, okay? And in ammonia, we've got one nitrogen atom and we've got three hydrogen atoms. However, the nitrogen still has a pair, a lone pair of electrons there. Okay, so that can be drawn in a pyramid shape like that. As I say, we will be um, exploring this further in the classroom with Molly Mod kits. 
All right, our V shape or bent molecule, and we're going to have a look at water, so H2O, two hydrogen and one oxygen to have a look at this. In this case, we've got two bonding pairs and we've got two lone pairs. So we've got our oxygen, we've got our two lone pairs and then our hydrogens. So remembering we're sharing electrons, two electrons here and we're sharing two electrons here. Okay, and if we look at that molecularly, we've got that showing that there's these two electrons that could be available for bonding. Okay, then we have our linear structure. Hydrogen chloride here we're gonna have a look at and you can see the structure there already drawn. And this is because the hydrogen is bonding with, so the hydrogen has one electron. Chlorine is sharing an electron to ensure they then get their full shells, but there's still three lone pairs, okay, for the chlorine. And then we have our planar or our flat molecules. And these have multiple bonds. Some are double, some are triple covalent bonds. So we've got nitrogen. So remembering one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So remembering each line is representing a pair of electrons. Okay, O2. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And here we've got two carbons. We've got a double bond between them. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Thank you for watching our video on covalent molecules. And I look forward to using the MolyMod kits in class to demonstrate this further.